per prisoner as soon as they come back. I'd written so, down, does that cruelty prevent repeat offenders? I wanted the answer to that, you know, because it would make me not want to go back again. But I guess I just It makes got me not it. want to go. Right? But but it sounds like it creates better criminals or bigger criminals. Or... Absolutely. I mean, yeah, there's the deterrent factor, but Arizona prides itself on that. It says we've got the toughest prisons. If you look at FBI stats, Arizona's got some of the highest reoffending in the whole of the country. So it's to do with the war on drugs. If you mass incarcerate low-level drug users, which is what most prisoners are, in the TV you see prisoners are like Pablo Escobar, Hannibal Lecter. That's all the media reports is extreme crimes on one side and how easy they got it on the other. They got PlayStations, they got gourmet food, they got luxuries. And this is how the media tricks the public into hating on prisoners. But when you get in there, the average arrest I saw was a black kid or a Mexican kid with a little bit of weed getting like a two to five year sentence. I had a cellmate who got caught with a roach. He got a um, 18 month sentence. I was there when a Vietnam vet got sentenced. A black guy had been shot in the head by a sniper. He'd won Purple Heart Medal for bravery. Prosecutor said he's unemployed. He's got a nice new car. There were some crumbs of cocaine on the car. He must be a dealer. And judge was like, bam, sent him away for almost 10 years like that. So it's a prison industrial complex that preys on the poorest sections of society. One cop said, I just go into a black neighborhood and make my arrest quota. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. I want to I circle all the way back around to the, that, that bail hearing because that had to be one of those moments where you're like just on the cusp of victory <laughs> and victory is snatched away and you're, you fall into the jaws of defeat because you were in minimum security, which wasn't fun, but not the worst scenario ever. I was and, in medium, medium. Oh, medium. I'm sorry. Yeah. And then because of the way that bail hearing went down and them inc doubling your bail, essentially, because you went over a $1 million bail, you're automatically upgraded to maximum security. And that's when you got sent to the Roach Motel. Yeah. And I've been in Towers Jail for a year. I know all the, I know all the slang. I know the prison walk. So the next day when I woke up the prison in walk? max security, I've got a go to the white table now, the woods, and they're going to determine now whether they're going to accept me or they're going to smash me. This is max security. They're nearly all in there for murder. There was a few crystal meth chemists. So I walk up to the, the table, you know, doing the prison war with all the slang. Like, what up, hey, Woods? Hey. What up, Woods? <laughs> <laughs> Where did you roll in from, Woods? Ahoy, ahoy. So I was jail. Um, they, they they made my bail bond over a million, so I got reclassed to max. They're like, you know, what are you in for, Wood? Um, ecstasy. So they're asking me all these questions, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm fitting in with these guys. They're going to accept me. Then I go back to my room, and hours later, the head of the gang, he comes down with all of his legal paperwork, <laughs> and he says, I want you to read this for me and tell you if, if, if this plea bargain they're offering me is is reasonable so they saw through my act and saw i was an educated person and i was a, re a resource to them <laughs> that's really funny they so can the, tell uh, i knew how to read so <laughs> now i'm the professor guy. <laughs> a, third, a third of the prisoners could not read all right in max security i set up a class for the mexicans teaching them how to write home in spanish because a lot of them worked out in the countryside and they couldn't uh, read and write. Then the Aryan Brotherhood put a green light to have me smashed for helping another race. I had an independent tough guy who was my cellmate at the time, Joe, and he intervened with the gang, and they allowed me to keep helping the Mexicans. Sean, can you move your mic closer? Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds so that's awful. So so that's, that sounds fucking horrible, but something I want to like... So th you got there, the Aryans approach you in your cell, and then... Kind of how does that relationship go from there? Like you, you said, there's no turning them down. You have to kind of play the game. Were there ever times where it was like, hey, you just earned your first swastika tattoo. Come on in. And you're like, no, actually, guys get like, you know, they also used an eagle. Let's do a real generic eagle. You know, like, <laughs> can you make it look yeah. like the Philadelphia Eagles? <laughs> so, I saw one skinhead. He had a tattoo of Hitler on his chest. 
<laughs> Zeke, no subtlety. <laughs> Zeke, Zeke Heiling, Zeke Heiling over a gas chamber with Jewish people dying inside the gas chamber. Yeah. Now here's here's what helped me out. Intricate. Here's what helped me out. Hey, Sean, can you move your mic a lot closer? Yeah, yeah. Is it going to go over the screen now? Is that okay? Oh, oh so much okay. better. My, my God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A, 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 All right, so good, yeah. over a over hundred people arrested with me, including some of my bouncers from the raves I was throwing, including my best friend from my hometown, who is a massive guy. He co-interviews people with me on my YouTube channel called Wild Man. He's like the UK Joey Diaz. <laughs> oh, I've seen that guy, yes. He, yeah, he is his, the UK his, Joey Diaz. His his fists are, t- are twice the size of mine, and they're just all human teeth marks <laughs> all over them. He's a good guy to get arrested with. <laughs> so once the AB guys in Towers Jail found out I was with Wild Man and that we were at one of the biggest crews in the jail, we had a coexistence with them, and none of our clique got smashed. Hmm. Jesus Christ. In, in that in that first in that first uh, year, that was when we were all together. I think what was most... your relation to the guy with the Hitler tattoo? Was he just like, <laughs> oh no, that's Alan? I think there's some other guy who's like, even Alan goes a little far for us. <laughs> I mean, well, Hitler goes a perfectly fine signet for us to use, and he goes for the whole portrait thing. <laughs> <laughs> None of us it... are on board with that. Don't think we're all like. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it this way: when the head of the whites got moved out of our building. And there was a white boy meeting, and we had to vote on the new head of the whites. I didn't vote for that skinhead. I <laughs> vote for Marco, who was out of the Italian mafia. The Italian mafia took over from the Aryan Brotherhood in that pod, and it was the best we ever had it. Like these guys were running the show outside the jail at night when we were all locked down, when we were all supposed to be asleep. Marco was outside the jail with the guards, smoking and giving them orders. Whenever we yeah. got raided. Whenever we got raided, uh, the guard, um, he would find out in advance and anything the guards took, all our bedding and everything, we'd get all fresh stuff from other guards, would bring it right back to us. He had a legal visit from his girlfriend. In legal visits, the guards can't watch. So his girlfriend would come in as a legal visitor mm-hmm. and give him blowjobs in the legal visitation room. Nice. And there was, <laughs> there was like the least violence ever under Marco's rule. I wrote a whole chapter about it in Hard Time. and It was the best... Um, of the time in Towers Jail was when the Italian mafia were running the show. But the good times never last. 